All right, guys, this is PC Tech. Um, I pretty much ditched the Gigabyte motherboard because I had weird issues with it going on. I couldn't um, edit the BIOS because it didn't have the .rom um, file name at the end. It has like, when the BIOS re revision was like the F3 for this kind of uh, motherboard, it has the, the BIOS name of, let's say, Gigabyte, GAEP35DS3P.F3 and it really tricked out um, the MM tool where you can uh, implement the microcodes for the Xeon CPUs that I want to install later on. So yeah, and I also had weird issues um, at configuring my memory at its rated speeds of 1066. Um, yeah, it just, it just didn't work out for me. So I had actually, I actually had this motherboard in my hobby room. Um, I haven't used it for a while now. And I also had to do all the maintenance work again. So change out all the thermal paste, thermal, comp, um, thermal um, pads, and clean the motherboard itself. Then I also had some eight gigabyte memory left over. So four times two gigabyte. It is Corsair XMS uh, memory only rated at 800 megahertz, but um, the timings are very narrow at 44412, so I should be able to get them to 1066 at a little bit um, wider timings. Um, I also installed all the software on the SSD that I'm gonna need for overclocking, and I just finished running a baseline test on the CPU so I so that I actually have a score that I can compare my CPU with later on. So the Cinebench R15 and we hit 240 points and the V core didn't go above 1.2 volts so that we have um, a baseline readout for our CPU. Actually I'm using um, the CPU ID hardware monitor. It is a software that you don't have to install, you can just run it and it is for free and I actually really like it because it gives you all the numbers you actually want to see all the temperatures on your motherboard or the CPU also all the voltage that you want to see and yeah just utilization the frequency pretty much everything you want then I also installed the, yes I also installed um, ADA64 Extreme and yeah, that's pretty much it for uh, overclocking the CPU. So as you might recall from uh, the Gigabyte BIOS, the ASUS BIOS looks quite a bit different. And I also had to do all the changes, especially with the SATA configuration. So it is actually running at AHCI and not at IDE because of this horrible IDE. And before I do any sort of overclocking now, I will just save the BIOS, if I can, yes I can. I will save it to profile one. Yep, so that I have all the configurations that I usually run without any overclock ready and set on my BIOS. And yeah, so that I don't have to fiddle around anymore with AHCI and all these other things that have especially like fast boot and disable the full screen logo when booting up because I don't need that. I just want my system to be um, ready as fast as possible. Now for ASUS motherboards, you will go to the advanced options and then jumper free configuration because here you will find all the overclocking features on this motherboard. And when I do overclocking by using the FSB uh, method, then I always try to find out um, the highest possible front side bus this motherboard will go with before I do any other overclocking. I don't overclock the CPU at the beginning and I don't overclock the memory at the beginning. I overclock the motherboard itself, so the system itself, um, so that I can uh, eliminate like the bottlenecks around my system so that I will know my motherboard is running at its um, most, um, like, yeah, it is highest possible um, frequency. So I will change this one from auto to manual. And 
This one is the FSB frequency. That's what, I, what we are going to work with. So the Q6600 runs at a frontside pass of 1066, which is very low because uh, most other, most, all of like, let's say the CPUs like the Q9550 or the Xeon E45, 54, 5450 are running at a frontside bus of 1333 megahertz, which would equal to an FSB frequency here of 333. And this motherboard will be fine with it anyway. And because we are going to overclock it, we will go higher, actually much higher. And that will just start at 400. I know that this motherboard should be totally fine with 400 because it isn't too much to ask for it. But we need to um, uh, adjust the CPU ratio so that we actually don't overclock the CPU right now. Just to go, we will go with the lowest possible number. So six will it be. And the CPU frequency will be um, the result of um, uh, the ratio. So the multiplier six multiplied with the 400 megahertz um, FSB frequency which would equal to 2.4 gigahertz again. So there is no overclock right now going on. Is it 2.4? Yes, it is 2.4, good. Then the PCIe frequency will set this one to 100, that there is no overclock. Same with um, the memory, we will have to go to 800. So there is no overclock in the memory right now. But you can already see that I'm actually already limited with my memory because, it is, because M800 is the lowest possible I can set in the BIOS right now and my memory is rated for 800 max. So, so like when I go for the next steps I will actually have to overclock my memory already. So yeah, just um, bear that in mind. Then I will leave all of this um, auto, 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 yeah. Maybe I will have to um, deal with um, North Bridge voltage later on because, or the FSB termination voltage. But I don't think 400 megahertz is um, high enough that it will have to deal with it. So we'll go exit and save changes. I will see if this system is actually still stable right now. We booted in the Windows just fine at 400 megahertz FSB, so to make sure that it actually is stable, we will run Cinebench again and monitor all the temperatures and we can actually also see all the frequencies that our parts are running at. Um, the CPU should be at 2.4 GHz max and it is. So as we can see here, 2.4 GHz. So actually within its base settings and yeah, we can, also, we can also see the voltage which changed from 1.2 to 1.35, which is weird actually. So yeah, we'll see how this one uh, will behave with higher FSB um, voltage uh, <coughs> settings. And we can also see all the temps, which are fine. And yeah, let's run Cinebench and see whether the system is still stable. So we finished our benchmark just fine, no problem, no blue screens. So we'll go back to the BIOS, no we don't save this score, and we will increase the FSB again. Um, but this time we will have to deal with the memory, because as I mentioned before, we will actually overclock the memory slightly, at least on its frequency side. And to, to um, accommodate that, we will change first of all the timings on the memory just to make sure that they won't get crazy. So we'll go for 55515 five, um, instead of 44412, four, four, which they would usually run at. Um, yeah, just to make sure that we, are, we aren't getting any issues because of that. Um, then we'll change the FSB frequency. I will go for rather big steps actually. I will go for 425 and see if it will be stable again. If not, we will have to deal with some voltage on, on the front side bus of this motherboard.
Excellent save changes and see if um, the system actually still posts. That's kind of always the first hurdle that you <laughs> you'll have to take. And hmm, yeah, it posts, no problem. Now, as I just saw, our CPU is running at 2.6 gigahertz right now. So we actually overclocked our, our CPU also just a little bit, but it, it should be fine. I mean, as you know, the Core 2 Quad Q6600 can be run at 3 gigahertz just by using the, the tape mods, where you just tape, um, I think, one or two pins on the CPU that it, it overclocks actually itself. So yeah, 2.6 GHz really isn't, isn't an issue for it. I will um, check the voltage and temps again. I can actually feel some heat coming off the VRM heatsink right now because our CPU V core is now at 1.35 volts. So still a little bit higher, that's interesting. We may want to change that later on, just to make sure that our CPU isn't running at too high a voltage. Even though the Q6600 is rated for 1.5 volts. So yeah, we are still within spec. I will run the benchmark again. And when we take a close look to Cinebench R15, it shows us a frequency, the 3.83 gigahertz. We would actually achieve that when we um, change the multiplier from it's 6 to I think 9 or so. Is it 9? I'm actually not sure. Um, yeah, but we're running it at its lowest multiplier at 2.55 gigahertz and not higher. So that's as you can see here in hardware monitor, 2.55 gigahertz. Yeah, I will run this benchmark and just see if it still is stable and then we'll go back to the BIOS, change it again and again and again and again. So it is a repeating task that I'm gonna do now and I will see you later with my highest possible FSB on this motherboard. Alright, um, I have the system now stable at least till the boot screen and um, <laughs> yeah. I um, got the FSP up to 500 megahertz, which is really nice. However, there are some issues with it. When you have such a high FSP, it also means when you change the multiplier from, let's say, 7 to 8, it will go from, from um, 3.5 gigahertz all the way up to 4 gigahertz, which is a massive step for such a CPU and it's very difficult to handle. I actually tried it and I just barely didn't make it into um, Windows and yeah so I I was um, dialing the FSB overclock a little bit back to from 500 to 490 which gives us a frequency on the CPU of around 3.9 gigahertz right now at uh, 1.55 volts it is really high I know, but do keep in mind, the CPUs are rated for up to 1.5 volts, so it should be more or less fine. And um, yeah, the memory is running at <clears throat> close to 1 gigahertz with the timings of 5.5.15 and 2.3 volts. So I haven't run any stress test right now, and you will be with me right now when I run Citibench R15 the first time. And I, I, also, I'm wondering on the voltage because I couldn't find the load line calibration setting within the BIOS. Though I could find a setting that was called CPU voltage um, damper. I've never heard of this setting before and I hope it is the load line calibration because we really need it. So it at least um, uh, opens all the programs up just fine. It shows us 4.41 gigahertz, which is wrong. It isn't running at 4.41 gigahertz. I wish it did, but we are at 3.9 right now. And yeah, fingers crossed and let's start the benchmark. I actually really expect a blue screen because it is so damn high for a Q6600. And 
Yeah, I don't think it is low line calibration because I set it to 1.55 and we are we have dropped to 1.512, which is quite a bit actually. Close to 0 0.04 volts. And one core is hitting 80s <clears throat> and the application crashed. However, it isn't a complete crash, so I'm actually wondering. I think we should be able to get this um, stable. I couldn't quite make it at um, 3.92 gigahertz. I was always getting a blue screen mid um, benchmark and I'm rather certain that we are um, limited by high temperatures on the CPU because at 3.9 2 gigahertz and 1.6 volts <laughs> our CPU was was getting up to over 90 degrees and even now at um, 1.55 volts and 3.845 gigahertz we are getting all the way up to 87 degrees C uh, on one core while running Cinebench R15 so it's really high in my opinion probably a little bit too high right now and yeah but I it actually leaves me with rather high expectations when I will do some modification on the cooling system um, there will be liquid included so yeah I think we will be able to deal with these temps and then go for a even higher overclock on this CPU I will I I really want to get over or at least 4 gigahertz out of this chip and we are really close now at 3.85 gigahertz which is already quite a number for a Q6600 and it gives us a score of uh, 378 points in Cinebench R15 multi-threaded obviously um, yeah I am I'm happy actually yeah I mean that was really straightforward. Figuring out the max FSP of your motherboard, um, dealing with the memory that they are actually still stable, and then just finding the balance between um, FSP, multiplier, and core voltage. And that was basically it. There were some minor tweaks I did to the BIOS, like CPU spread spectrum disabled, PCIe spread spectrum disabled. Um, the CPU PLL at 1.8 volts. Um, yeah, that's it. Um, what I will do... Uh, yes, I want to save it for sure. And yeah, that was basically all I had to say for now. And we will see us again when I do the modification on the on the cooling system and when I will actually build this computer <laughs> into a case with fans and with actual airflow going on because right now I'm just using a um, a Noctua NFF12 fan to cool um, one of the VRM heatsinks and also the memory modules I know the lighting situation right now is really bad because it is evening right now and yeah. Thanks for watching this video and I hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you again in the next one. Bye.